Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. We're so excited that you've decided to join us for Watch Where You Sit. Our pastors prepared a message just for you, and we're so excited about what God is going to do in your life. Sit back and get ready for Watch Where You Sit, and it starts now. We got a song for the moms today. Come on. I know you've been through some things. Ain't no need to be ashamed now. You know God got you right. Did the best that you could. Let His grace fill the place now. Look at what Psalm 139 says. He made me in your womb, so you know that I'm a blessed child. So, mom, this is your day. Let the past be the past, cause your future's in His hands now. For the little feet sharing God's grace Here to let you know them prayers meant something Now preaching to the youth that the king is surely coming I know it's been a long road but mama it was worth it Your little boy's a grown man, he's living for a purpose Started all wrong but had to walk by myself Give it all to Jesus, you don't need nobody else Come on church today to give honor and glory to Jesus and to give honor and glory to our moms. It is their day. Happy Mother's Day. Come on. Come on. Look around for a moment beside you. Say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. And y'all can be seated in the house. And y'all can be seated in the house. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Come on. Man, Rescue Church got some videos going on now too, boy. Woo. Come on. Good stuff. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. Well, um, I just want to uh, just share something real quickly, real quickly. I want you, every, everyone in this room, I know sometimes Mother's Day um, can be challenging for some. For others, they're celebrating it. For others, it could be a little challenging. Maybe you've lost some a, a mom or maybe your relationship with your mom, you know, wasn't the same as somebody else. But I do want you to know, listen to me, that you always have Jesus. And Jesus will never leave you, never forsake you. He is a father to the fatherless. That means he is your Abba Father. He loves you. He cares for you. So you've got something to celebrate today. Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. We truly, truly have a good, good father. Amen. How many of y'all can testify that God's been good to you? God's been good to you. I know every mom in this house, every mom in this house got my back this morning. Amen. And you don't want to mess with a mom. Come on, somebody. Amen. Some of y'all kids smiled real quick, but then you looked at her like with that. Yeah, like, uh-huh. yeah y'all know what I'm talking about. Mom's like, yeah, don't you be eyeballing me, boy. Amen. Come on, especially them old school moms, you know. Old school moms aren't, aren't afraid to hit you in public. You know what I mean? Yeah. Come on, come on. Anyways, I better not talk about that this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my mom. I'm grateful for moms, but I'm also grateful for a spiritual mom that Rescue Church has. And that's my beautiful wife, Becky. So I want you to come up. We, we want to honor you today. Come on up, love. We want to honor you. Tell you we love you. She's a spiritual.
spiritual mom to so many, so many. We got our beautiful flowers. Well, I just want to say something real quick, real quick before we start jamming. You know, my wife will get up here and jam too. She has no problem dancing with me. But I do, I do want to say I love you. I want you to know that you are special. You're a spiritual mom to so many. You, you have actually stepped up. Uh, my wife is, 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 I'm telling you, she's speaking more. She's actually ministering and discipling a group of ladies. You, you're pouring out. You're pouring what you have into those that God has blessed you with. And I want to say thank you. And I love you. Amen. Come on, y'all give her another hand. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Such, I'm so honored and I'm so blessed to get to be the mom of this house. Amen. It's, it's my honor, my privilege. I'm so uh, thankful that God entrusted me with it. I'm so grateful for your prayers. Amen. That he helps me to do this. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. I do love all of y'all. Amen. Come. Awesome. Woo. Come on. I'm telling you, my wife is beautiful, listen to me, on the inside and the outside. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. God, so real quickly, just give your neighbor a high five. Say, give him a high five. Say, hey, watch where you sit. Say, watch where you sit. And y'all can be sitting real quick. Watch where you sit. Watch where you sit. I, I also want to extend, um, extend honoring all moms in the room beyond just uh, the first lady of the house. I also want to extend it and just want to say, moms, we thank you for all the love you've shown to so many lives in this room that we know and we hopefully realize, uh, you know, without you, we could be here. And so we want to honor you. We want to honor you once again. And so what we'd like to do at this part of the service is we want to, we want to bless every mom with a gift. Every mom with a gift. This is something my wife picked out just special for all you ladies. So all the moms in the room, if you could just please stand. Please stand real quick. And let's honor them with some applause. Come on. Let's honor them with some applause. Come on. And the ushers, if you could, could go ahead. The ushers are going to give you a gift. And once you get your gift, go ahead and be seated. Once you get your gift, go ahead and be seated. I want to make sure every mom gets a gift. It's a love so true, I can never get enough of you. This feeling can't be wrong. I'm about to get my worship on, take me away. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, it's a put the All right, y'all sing it up in here. Come on, amen. Hallelujah, God is good. Yeah. God is good. Amen. And we're just so grateful for our moms. Moms, we hope you're blessed by this gift. Um, it's some type of lipstick, lip balm thing. Looks really cool to me. Uh, that's all I know. Amen. And uh, it's like, wow, this is pretty neat. But anyhow, uh, I, I, I do every once in a while borrow my, my wife's, you know, lip balm. But she's like, no, you have to have your own. Amen. So some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, what I want to do is I've, I've got I've got a I've actually got a message for you guys today that God put on my heart that God's put on my heart that that ties into the series. Watch where you sit, so y'all get a little taste of of what we're talking about in this series. I do want to let everybody know in this series I'm not talking about where your bottom sits. I'm talking about where your soul sits. I do want you to know that. But 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 before I before I get into the to, to the message or the word that God has for her this morning, I I do want every mom to know I'm, I'm trying to make it uh, special for you, but at the same time I don't just don't want to give something that sounds fancy. I want I want to give you something that heaven has for you, and I, I want there to be a real spiritual deposit in your life that uh, something that I, I know I've heard from God that He wants to download and deposit into your life. And so um, it, it, it it's so just be ready to receive. Can I say that? So tell the person next to you, I'm ready to receive. And so it's not something Pastor Paul would pick, but it is something God's picked just for you. Amen. And so I want to say that up front. But before, before I get into that, I always like to share something a little funny on Mother's Day and just to give us some insight to how awesome our moms are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you five, five superhuman things mom can do. Five superhuman things mom can do. Now, honestly, for some of y'all, some of y'all probably have a list of hundreds but I'm just going to give you five for the sake of time. But one is this, and this is, this is so true. Moms usually can find things dads or kids can't find. I mean, they're just mom eyes. You know what I mean? And I've got man eyes. I can open up the fridge and the ketchup's right there and I cannot find it. 
And I'm like, Becky, where's the ketchup? She says, it's right there in the door on the right-hand side, uh, just, just right at the very end. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. Amen. <laughs> Moms just know these things. You know what I mean? It's supernatural. It's superhuman. And so that's number one. Number two, how many guys know moms can shop, carry the baby, and keep an eye on their kids all at the same time? How, how y'all do that? I do not know. I do. I mean, y'all can multitask. Men, uh, let's just leave that alone right now. But I mean, how they do, I was like, I got a baby, I'm shopping, I'm checking things out. You know, they can even be carrying their stroller and then they still got their eye on their kid. You better, you better not touch that. I don't know, mom's just, man, it's superhuman. You know what I'm talking about. Number three is this, moms can sense when their child is lying. Come on, moms, give me an amen. I know, I know some of y'all, and some of y'all teens are thinking, ah, she don't know. Oh, trust me, she can sense it. You better be careful. You better be careful. I mean, guys know everything comes to the light. Number four, I know, they're like, preach that one, Pastor. Number four, moms can hear what kids are saying in the other room. Go figure. I don't know how that is. I mean, me and my cousins were having this conversation. We walk out, mom's like, why are you talking about that? How did you hear that? They, they just got those bionic ears. And number five, I love this. This is so true. Moms will sacrifice more than any child can ever repay. Can I get an amen? They just do. They just do. Moms are that. Man, yeah, let's give some applause to our moms. It's so true. Amen. And one little last funny thing I want to do. I always like to do this every year. I didn't want to leave it out this year. I thought about leaving it out, but I was like, nah. I'm going to put it in there. I always like to, to share some of the, the top things moms say. So I'm going to just give you top five things mothers say. And it changes every year. It changes every year. So the first one, number five, is this. Is stop playing with your phone at the table. It's a, it's a new day. You know, in my day, we, I wouldn't know what you're talking about. But it's a whole new day. It's a whole new day. Number four is this. As long as you live under my roof, you'll do as I say. Yeah, come on, mom's like, yes, right, yeah, go ahead, on, man. man, I'm about to change this message up, Lord, I mean, whoo, moms are on fire, amen, come on, let's talk about it, okay, number three, you treat your friends better than you do your own family, some of y'all moms go, I just told you that last week, number two, is you're not going out public wearing that, girl, I'm going to leave that one alone. And my favorite, this is why I couldn't leave. This is my favorite. I love this one. Number one is this. I brought you into this world. I can take you out. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's my favorite right there. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I'm, I'm going to get into the message now. We're going to shift gears. Y'all got the roll with me. I'm going I'm to go, I'm gonna go a little quick because we have this awesome prize giveaway. Come on. Amen. We got two awesome, beautiful purses. That I know you guys are going to love with some awesome gifts on the inside. It's a mystery on which one we're giving away. So get ready, Mom. You can go ahead and claim it. You can expect it and just believe for it. Amen. And uh, y'all can always share. Amen. But I'll leave that alone. So let me get into what, what God has for us um, this morning. And so um, this kind of ties into the series. It's not exactly where I'm going in the series, but it ties into it. And I want to talk about something that I know is, uh, it's huge. It's huge right now. It's huge in, in our culture. It's huge in our society. It's huge with, uh, with, with what we, media would say with women, but I also believe this happens with men. Um, and I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about, I've titled this message, The Seat of Comparison. Mm, right there. I, I, I thank you for the one person that said good. Amen. I know it sounds a little tough, but it, it's so true. It's so true. And I think, I think when we come to church, how many of you guys know that's where the, the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And for those who aren't in freedom, I think God wants to set them free. And I, I believe this message is because God loves you, and he, and he wants to set some people free from sitting in the wrong seats, from sitting in the seat of comparison. Listen, mean, God has a seat set apart just for you. Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. So tell your neighbor, don't sit in the wrong seats. And 
so, and so we're going to talk about the seat of comparison. I want you to know, once again, I'm not talking about comparing bottoms. I'm talking about comparing lives. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about comparing lives. And so, so moms, hear my heart on this. Hear my heart on this. I, though this speaks to everybody in the room. And so moms, listen to me, you don't have to look like someone else, talk like someone else, or be like someone else. You don't have to be the prettiest, the greatest cook, and the most spiritual mom. You don't have to be the best PTA mom, sports mom, or educated mom. And you don't have to be the super mom above all moms. Just be the, God, the, the mom that God called you to be. Can I get an amen? Come on, just be the best you you can be. Amen. Ooh, so number one is this. Number one is this. Tell you per- the person next to you, Rick, watch where you sit. Number one is this. Moms, don't try to sit in someone else's seat. I, I know, I know, I know. I, trust me, this is such, such this is kind of a, a tough love thing, but not really. This is just something that's going to set some people free this morning. Can I get an amen? And it's, it's what God put on my heart to share with you. And so, moms, don't try to sit in someone else's seat. How many guys know we should never try to sit in anybody else's seat? Just the seat that God has prepared for us. Meaning this, don't try to be like the person next to you. Be who God called you to be. Come on, don't, don't be like the person next to you. Be who God called you to be. Be who God called you to be. I don't need to be like the Joneses. Come on, somebody. I don't need to compare. I don't need to compare. I don't need to be in competition. I just need to be who God's called me to be. I don't need to look and look and focus on them. I need to focus on what God has for me. Come on, amen. I don't need to, 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 to be focused on the promises that have been fulfilled in their life. I should rejoice for them, but I need to focus on the promises God has for my life. Come on, somebody, amen. And mom, God has some promises for you that he wants to see fulfilled in your life, but you have to sit in the seat that he's prepared for you. Amen, it's good stuff. So watch this, Psalms 139. Psalms 139, I got two scriptures to kind of back this up. I'm gonna read one verse, verse 14. Verse 14, I love it. Some of y'all know this very familiar passage of scripture. David speaking, he says, I will praise you, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully what made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm still, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. How many guys know for some of us when you're being made, God is still molding? Come on, somebody. Well, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. It's okay. God's still molding you because you're being made. You're being made into who he created you to be. Come on, somebody. Amen. He says, I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that what? And that my soul, and that my soul knows it very well. This is where my soul sits. My soul sits, my soul says, as long as my soul is sitting in the seat that you've prepared for me, I'm being molded, I'm being molded, I'm being made because I'm on the potter's wheel and I'm being molded and I'm being fashioned and I'm being fearfully and wonderfully made into who God created me to be. I don't need to be like you. I just need to be who God called me to be. Amen. Woo. So let me break this down for you. For some of you who don't know, the word fearfully, the word fearfully, it means this. It means this when you study it out. It means with great reverence or it means with heartfelt interest. With heartfelt interest. Woo, man. How many guys know we're talking about God right here? It's the word wonderfully. I want you to know what the word wonderfully means if you study this out. The word wonderfully means this. It means unique. It means set apart. And it means marvelous. It means unique, set apart, and marvelous. Now, what does that mean, Pastor? That means this. I believe this. I believe, I believe that David is saying that there never has and there, and there never will be another you. Can I get an amen? I said, David is saying there never has and there never will be another you. So mom, hear my heart on this. This is me being original, not a copycat. Being original, not a copycat. Don't try to be like somebody else. Be the awesome and unique person God created you to be. Amen. And when you, well, listen to me, when, when you know you're being made new, when you know that God is molding you, when you know that God has created you unique, and you know that you're awesome, and you are the apple of his eye, and you know you're fearfully and wonderfully made in his sight, when you know all these things, do you know, ladies, that you can admire somebody else's blessings and not question your own? You can admire somebody else's uh, prettiness and not question your own? Y'all hearing me? Amen. 
Why? Because you're secure in Christ. And you can't be secure unless you're sitting in the seat God prepared for you. Come on, somebody. That's good preaching right there. Amen. Amen. And so I, I love this quote. I love this quote. And it says this. It says, I I don't know who wrote it, but I just love this quote. It says, every minute you spend wishing you had someone else's life is a minute spent wasting your own or wasting yours. That's good right there. Amen. Every minute you spend wishing you had someone else's life is a minute spent wasting yours. Amen. I don't know if we have that on the screen, but you guys got it written down. Amen. And so here's here's this. When when I was was thinking about this point, when God downloaded this point, it it also, it led me to, to, to the book of Psalms, but it also led me to Matthew uh, chapter 20. And, uh, and uh, just to kind of back up the point, I, I want you to guys know this, this story in the Bible is about, about a mother, a mother who had two sons. Her sons uh, were James and John, uh, also known as the, as the sons of Zebedee. And she comes to Jesus and she asks Jesus, could her sons sit at the right or the left of him in his kingdom? And so Jesus answered like this. I want you to know how Jesus answered. Let's just read Matthew 20. I'm going to give you one verse, verse 23. And it says this. So he said to them, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But sit, but to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give. But it is for those whom it is prepared by my father. But it is for those whom it is prepared by by my father how many guys know god has a seat prepared for you come on somebody so jesus jesus could promise them a seat that god had prepared for someone else so here's my heart here my heart on this listen to me and this is for everybody in the room don't ask jesus for a seat god didn't prepare for you Woo, that's good right there amen amen come on Don't ask him, why? Because how many guys know God has a seat set apart just for you? Come on, somebody. So don't try to sit in someone else's seats. Number two is this. Number two is this. Watch. Watch. This is powerful. Watch this. You won't compare seats when you see the good in your own. That's good right there. Woo. You won't compare seats when you see the good in your own. When you see the good in your meaning this, people who compare themselves to others don't see the good in themselves. Come on, somebody, help me out. Moms, hear my heart on this, hear my heart on this. If you will look, I know every morning we look into the natural mirror, but listen to me, moms, if you will wake up in the morning and you will look into the mirror of his word. Come on, somebody. Come on, and you will look into the mirror of his word. How many guys know you'll begin to see? You'll begin to see who God created you to be. You will begin to see who God created you. begin to see. You begin to see that you are beautiful. You will begin to see that, that you are wonderful. You will begin to see that you are valued. You will begin to see that you are significant. You will begin to see that you are loved. Come on, somebody. You will begin to see that you are special so special that he set apart a seat reserved just for you mom amen no need to compare when God has a seat just for me can I get an amen hallelujah good stuff amen hallelujah and so watch this Galatians chapter 6 verses 4 through 5 and it says this some of y'all didn't even know this was in the Bible watch this it says this and it's basically the same in any translation. It says this, pay careful attention to your own work. Pay careful attention to your own work. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. I mean, this preaches all by itself. And watch this. And you won't need to what? Compare yourself to anyone else. <laughs> Woo, keep your eyes on your own seat. Well, I should have titled that. That could have been a good title for the ministry. Keep your eyes on your own seat. Kind of sounds funny, but anyhow. Depends on your perspective. Thank you, Brian. Amen. And so you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. Verse 5. For we, we, are, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Mm-mm, that's powerful. That's good. Come on, y'all go ahead and clap. God is so good. Now watch this, watch this. I'm going to give you a, 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 just a s- simplified 
uh, meaning of this. Simply put, this is just saying, hear my heart on this. This is saying, just remember to count your own blessings and you won't need to compare them with others. Did y'all get that? I know that came out fast, but it, it's good. I'm going to say that again. Remember to count your own blessings and you won't need to compare them with others. Why? Because you're too busy counting your own blessings. Come on, somebody. Amen. So hear my heart on this. Hear my heart on this. That means this to me. You got to stop counting the number of degrees, awards, trophies people have, the number of friends or the followers they have on social media, the number of cars they have or the size of their home or their bank account. Come on, somebody. Start counting your own blessings. Tell the person that you count your own blessings. Listen, when you keep your eyes on your own blessings, you won't count or compare them to others. That's good preaching right there, boy. Ooh. Booyah. Amen. If I had time, boy, I, I want to get into some more on that. But hear my heart on this. Watch this, just so y'all can see. Y'all can see. Watch, counting your own blessings. Watch this. It, it keeps you from being jealous of others. It's amazing. We're jealous of each other in the church. Are you kidding me? Why would you be jealous of somebody else? You should rejoice. Don't be jealous of what they got. Be grateful for what God has given you. Because if you're grateful, come on somebody, and you you count your own blessings, you won't be jealous of others. You'll be grateful of what God's doing in your life. And gratefulness opens the door to more blessings. Come on, somebody. Come on, we got to quit sitting in the seat of comparison. Why do we compare? We compare this, we compare lives, we compare churches. This is not a competition. Maybe it's the wrong mentality. Because you sit where your mind is. Remember that. <laughs> Boy, that's good stuff right there. So we got to count our own blessings. When you count your own blessings, how many guys, it keeps you from being critical of others. You really have the right to criticize. You better count your own blessings. You're going to start losing some. Are y'all hearing me? And watch this. Counting your own blessings keeps you from being judgmental of others. Y'all know it's true. And counting your own blessings keeps you from comparing yourself to others. We don't need to sit in the seat of comparison. When God, God has already, he's already, hear my heart on this, I'm going to say this again. God has already set apart a seat. Listen to me, a seat reserved just for you. Mommy, just for you, the seat that you sit in when you become a Christian. He says, now he seats you in heavenly places. He seats you in heavenly places. He seats you so high above the noise of the world. He seats you so high above. Come on, somebody, the voice of the enemy. He seats you so high above all the attacks. He seats you so high above the lower standards. Come on, somebody. He seats you high above anything that tries to come against you. When I'm sitting in the seat that God has designed for me, there's nothing to compare to because every other seat is beneath me. Come on, somebody! Hallelujah! Amen. And I've got to close with saying this, Mom. Saying this. Saying this. Listen to me. It isn't necessarily just a seat that's special. It's because you're special. because you're special you're so special you're so valued to God that God took the time to design a place just for you to sit God said honor me but first I'm going to show you how much I can honor you not only have I prepared the table but I've also prepared a place for you to sit hallelujah tell your neighbor watch where you sit amen amen I want to close with this last quote this quote is this moms 
the greatest gift you'll ever give away is the best version of yourself. That's powerful. Come on, y'all clap. Thank you, Lord. The greatest gift you'll ever give away is the best version of yourself. And I want to say for some of the moms in this room, listen to me, maybe, maybe you don't feel loved by others, but I want you to know you're always loved by God. You always love God by God. Well, I haven't done everything perfectly. Well, allow the perfect one to perfect some things in your life, to do some great things in your life. Listen to me, every day is a new day to allow God to do something new inside of you. Amen. So listen to me, forget the past. Your past does not define you. You've already been defined by the word. So that means where you sit, where, listen to me, I want you to know, listen to me, you are who God says you are. And you don't need to watch where you sit. Can I get an amen? Amen, I'm done. Y'all give the Lord a hand up in here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to close with this. Two things I want to do. Number one is this. And for those of you watching on live stream, and to all the moms watching on live stream, I want to close with this. Listen to me, I don't know, know where you're at in this room. I don't know where your life is. Maybe there's some in this room you've kind of drifted. Maybe there's some of you, listen to me, that you say, Pastor, I've, I've never even surrendered my life to Christ. I want you to know the Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. You will be saved. And I want everybody in this room to know that God has already reserved a seat for you in heaven. And Jesus paid the price to the death, burial, and resurrection. All you got to do is receive the free gift of eternal life. And so if you say, Pastor, that's me, I need to come back to Jesus. If you say, Pastor, that's me, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. If you're watching on live stream right now, if that's you, I want you to, I want you right now just to write in your room, wherever you're at, God's speaking to you, ministering to you. I want you to go ahead and, and say, I'm saying yes to Jesus today. I will receive that free gift. If you're in this room right now saying, I don't want to deny it. I don't want to reject it. I want to receive the free gift of eternal life found through Jesus Christ. I want the seed that God has reserved and paid for for me. I want to do that right now, Pastor. If that's you, can I just see your hand? You can go ahead and lift your hand. Lift your hand. Never be ashamed of the name of Jesus. I see your hands. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One more time. Just get them up real high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah as a sign of surrender to him. Now I'm going to ask everybody in this room just to repeat after me. Those of you watching on live stream, just repeat after me. Just say, Dear Lord, today I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. Make me new. Help me to live for you every day in every way. Lord, I receive your love, your grace, in your forgiveness I believe I'm heaven bound in Jesus name Amen y'all give them a hand thank you Lord